the Nazis came up with the idea of a savings booklet. If citizens paid 5 Reichsmarks every week until they reached the full price of 990, then they could get their Volkswagen in a little under 4 years, when the full amount was paid off. 5 Reichsmarks a week was a reasonable rate for most working class Germans, and so over 300,000 Germans signed up. But none of them ever got their Volkswagen, and all of their hard earned savings would be lost. This tutorial is going to cover the creation of the draft edit all the way to applying effects and overlays. It was a long video, therefore I split it down into 4 parts, and if you want early access to the other parts before they are available on the main channel, you can find them on my Patreon with a link in the description below, along with the project file and assets used. There are some plugins we have to download and the first plugin we're gonna download it is animation composer 3 yeah they have a free version and a paid version but now you can download that free version and use it because we're gonna use it in this project and also there's another plugin which is the fx console from video copilot and you'll download this one if you're using windows or download this if you're using a mac okay so let's go so first of all we're gonna start by creating a new composition the volks wagon and we're gonna keep the dimensions as 1920 by 1080 and then the frame rate is gonna be 24 frames per second so now let's uh, make this 30 minutes and i want the background color if it's not by default black you make it black okay so i'm gonna hit okay before you even go any further let's come here and create some folders let's say this is gonna be for the assets and then we're gonna create another folder which is gonna be for the pre-comps let me drag this and drop it, it in here now inside the assets folder we're gonna have to import some assets so these are the assets which we're going to use for this entire project folder let's drag them and drop them there so now our work is more organized okay now what we're gonna do i'm gonna come here and look for i'm gonna drag this nazi logo and place it in my composition it's not centered so first of all i'm going to first reduce the size by pressing s and then I'm going to resize it so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come here and then click on this and then i open up the title slash action uh, what i'm gonna do next i'm going to drag this slightly and put it in the center so now it's done so what you're gonna do i'm gonna come here and alt click because as default it is always the rectangle so it's gonna be alt clicking until you see the ellipse so now when it gets to the ellipse i'm going to release the logo because when we try to create the shape when the flag is selected it will create a mask but you don't want a mask so i'm going to deselect it and then what we're gonna do i'm gonna come here and create a shape but now this shape is not constrained from where we are creating the shape we're going to first hold control and then afterwards we're gonna hold shift so when you hold shift it remains a circle and we're going to go back here on our selection tool and then we're gonna bring this one in the center but now when i look at this it is bleeding out we need to know the difference so i'm gonna first change the shape to a color which is different from the background let's extend it slightly above somewhere like that with arrow keys now what i'm gonna do next so i'm gonna come here on toggle switches slash modes and then i'm gonna come to mat i'm gonna create a mat and the mat is going to be the shape which is above here so when i create this it will cut out the red part so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the shape layer and then pick whip it to the logo so that when i move the logo it moves together with the shape press s which is for the scale and then resize it down and now i'm gonna come here to layer and look for a solid and for the solid i want it to be a red solid so i'm gonna just drag it to the corner and bring my solid down here but now it's so clean so what you're gonna do you're gonna have to introduce a texture then I'm gonna bring it down here let's uh, reduce the size it is so big and now I'm gonna change the blend mode to let's say multiply I think multiply would work for me but this is too dark you know like let me just uh, levels the reason why I'm using levels is because it is gonna help me to increase the contrast in the texture so now this it's already done let me just pre-compose it and just call it the uh, so Nazi flag and here okay i'm going to bring exactly the asset we used first or the texture and then bring it down here hide this one and then just scale it to 49 let me bring this i need a new solid it's gonna be like black because i want it to be down so i'm gonna drag it here and i can name it as background because this is gonna be our overall background so background and hit okay um when i bring my curves or let me use levels because levels is better let me just use this 
So now when we bring this one back here, I'm going to reduce it a bit too. Let me create a mask here. So I'm going to come here on mask and then come to the mask path and then double click on it to create these. Using our first technique we used, you're going to hold shift to move it evenly, something like that. So now it's done, you're going to press F or you can just come here and just move this because it's already available. Okay, let me, let me make this um, a 3D object and then animate the Z position, right? I'm going to press P for the position and then I'm going to go back at the beginning and then I'm going to move it backwards like that. I'm going to try to make it skip. Let's say we have a keyframe here. Let's say time 212. Let's put it like somewhere here. And then now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come here. And I create a keyframe. This is going to be like a disposable keyframe. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it on this one. I want it to skip from this point like that. But then I don't want you to skip it like that. So now I'm going to get this keyframe. You know what? Let me first make all these keyframes easy ease. And now I'm going to make this keyframe to be toggle hold keyframe. So this is like going to hold the movement or like by the time it moves from this point to another, it's not going to be a gradual movement. It is going to just keep from this point to this point. And now let's first fix the these keyframes. Now I'm going to go here on the graph editor and then try to fix that. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Now we're going to come back here in our project and open up the files. So we have our documents, so I have the back part and then the front part. Then I'm going to drag them and put them into our composition. I'm going to open up a new null object and then I'm going to parent all these to the null object. Okay, so that when I try to scale them down, it will be evenly scaled. That's cool. So now, but I want this to be at the back. I'm going to rotate this one slightly, but then I want it to be slightly toward this direction and also this one. So let's do it like that. Cool somehow like that but i think this is a lot reduce the size a lot so let's say 30 that is better for me these ones come from the bottom then they come up i need to name my keyframes because you know i'm gonna come here on the document i'm gonna put a keyframe here so position have a keyframe there let's call this 211 i'm gonna put another keyframe there but now the first keyframe, it has to put it somewhere below. So I'm going to move it very far down. I think I can move this, you know, the end point to, let's say, yeah, I'm going to do this keyframe assistant and do it like that. So I want the keyframes to be easy ease. Do something like that cool we will be okay when we apply a drop shadow on one of these layers and then uh, i can increase the softness a bunch let's uh, increase the opacity slightly as well so now i'm gonna create a shape tool so i'm gonna come here on my ellipse make sure that none of the points or none of the layers here are selected alt click i'm holding alt down here until we reach the rectangle so now I'm going to create a rectangle like this. Okay, this rectangle has to be white. So now let's go back to our selection tool. So I want it somewhere like this. So now I'm going to type these words. But now I want this word to be red. So now I'm going to drag it here and put it exactly where this word is or where this shape is. But now I can also copy the drop shadow we used there and then paste it on the background or on this layer in the background or the shape layer but now it's uh it's so feathered i'm gonna reduce the softness a bit and the second part is is putting another word down here there's another word which we're gonna have to use down there so ctrl d that is copying and then i'm gonna drag it and type the word savings booklet this is going to be slightly like bigger than the word above. But the deeper we go into this video, the less I explain things because I know that I've explained them earlier. So you have to be very attentive. But then I need to also add a drop shadow. 
So now let me get this drop shadow, this drop shadow, and then uh, I'm gonna paste it on this. When you overuse shortcuts, you sometimes forget how to use the other things without a shortcut. But now, um, this word has some bit of animation on it. Okay, let's pre-compose this word. You understand why I'm doing it. I'll explain later. Booklet, and then I'm gonna go into another composition. This is double click. So now that this word is in this new composition, I'm gonna come here down because it's a text layer and then I'm gonna come here on animate and then I'm gonna look for enable per character 3D. I'm going to create another thing. Let's say I'm gonna add position and on position I'm going to put a keyframe there and then I'm gonna come on time 4, 6 and then I'm gonna put another keyframe there. Okay, but for 4, for the first keyframe we're going to say this is going to be at 500 the Z place or the Z position is going to be at 500. Then as it moves like this, it comes on zero. But still, that's not all we're going to do. We're going to have to come here down in range and then we're going to offset it slightly. And then um, I'm going to come to add advanced and then I switch random order on so that it's not like in order. That's the first part. Now the second part, we're going to still press U to bring the keyframes we've created press control space to bring this fx console and then you're gonna type typewriter so when you type typewriter it is gonna type out things okay this is the second animation and then i'm gonna bring this one and i put it exactly where this one ends so for the start we're gonna bring the randomness order on words are coming in and they're coming off you know like that something like that now since this is a 3d object i'm gonna bring a camera let's say i'm gonna call to layer new bring a new camera and a new camera what i'm gonna use is a two node camera there's a, there's nothing so big about the camera the depth of field should be enabled because this is basically what you want it for now we're gonna say this is gonna be depth of field i'm gonna open the second view something like this and then tap on this layer to know i come here in the camera and then i just open camera options the depth of field is already on when I bring this one slightly behind the characters which are in the background, I want them to be out of focus. So let me change this. I prefer using hexagon because I think it's the nice stuff. So let me increase this a bit. And now it is showing you that the words, the words down there, they're out of focus as, and as they move forward, they get into focus. Now we go back into our main composition, which is the Volkswagen. You see, now it's like that. The reason why I decided to just put it in another composition is because I didn't want it to affect the rest of the layers. I'm going to bring this gentleman here and I also make him a 3D object from this side. But the camera stays there. It doesn't affect anything here. I'm going to make also this one a 3D object and also this one a 3D object. Let me just make this and call it the KDF. You know what, let me call it Rec so that I can remember it very well. So now I'm also making this a 3D object. I make all the document 3D objects. I'm gonna drag these and bring them down here. Let me create a temporarily um, now object to first resize these two. So now I'm gonna make this a 3D object because these are 3D objects already. So these two, I'm going to parent them like that. And then I'm gonna resize them. I'm gonna reduce the size a bit. I don't want them to be so big. Let me extend them there. So now it's better to now parent them to the rest of the project like that. So now everything is a document. So you will see that when this one goes down, it goes with all the words. Does it make sense now? Yeah, it now makes the most sense. You'll understand that, right? Okay, now let me open up a new now object. And I can call it a scalar, something like that. Uh, a position let me just create this to make it a 3d object and then put something in there that's the first keyframe and then the second keyframe is going to be at the exact beginning which is at frame one the nazi flag i want it to be on the scalar and also since the document is controlling everything it can also be parented instead of parenting everyone i'm only parented the thing which is controlling the rest so now i'm going to reduce the size pushing it behind in the background somehow like that now i'm going to select everything like this easy ease i'm gonna make this thing go a bit smoother as it's moving out and basically that's where we're gonna cut it from i'm gonna come here on scalar because scalar stops here it stops on uh, 417 then i'm gonna just bring it a frame forward like 418 so I'm gonna highlight everything, the background and its texture, they're gonna stay there. Press Alt and then, you know, the close brackets, you know, these box brackets to cut them from there. So that's it. 
So now I can highlight everything and just say pre-compose and I call this scene one. Cool. So now that's it for scene number one. We will go back to it later because we need to also apply motion blur. So that's the first part. So now we're gonna hide it and then we're gonna start the second scene. Now, the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come here in my assets. I'm gonna look for grid. You see this grid? Yeah, I'm gonna place it there. I'm gonna apply an effect, which is tint. So for tint, I'm going to swap. Now it is dark, but I need it to be red. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, let's reduce you a bit like that. Yeah, I guess that's better. The second part is, I'm gonna have to use the shape tool. So now I'm going to just create this somehow like that put this in the center because I want it in the center okay so let me extend this a bit so yeah that's it I'm gonna change the color to that to red and then I'm gonna come here to the Nazi flag because I need this circle so I'm gonna copy it with ctrl and C and then I'm gonna come back in Volkswagen and then paste it with ctrl V but remember it is printed to this so you see now it's moving together I'm gonna come here and scale and then scale it a bunch. I guess seven will work. You know what? I don't like the rulers. Control R. Yeah, get rid of them. Now, what we're gonna do? You see, these are all the shapes. Let me call this the circle, and this is the rectangle. Yeah, let me call it just direct. I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm going to get this one. You see, I'm gonna drag it at the bottom. Okay, so that the ones we've duplicated, they all come to the bottom. So what we're gonna do, I'm going to come back here and look for the Volkswagen first logo. So now I'm gonna bring it into my composition. It is black already, so I don't think we need to change the color of it. Then I'm going to resize it and scale it down. And now I'm going to duplicate the circle, bring it back. But this circle is blue, remember? You have to change it. We are going to duplicate this one below the rectangle as well. But now I want all these guys to be parented to the... You, I don't want you to do this. I want you to be parented to the rectangle because it's the second layer. Or maybe I could call it the Volks. So I'm going to call them Volks. All of them Volks. 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 You know what? Volks rec. So correct. I'm going to get the bo both of these and then pre-compose them. And then just call this Volks flag. I also do this for... And I call this the Nazi flag. Okay, now this is done. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna double tap on this. I'm gonna come here and uh, look for, okay, this is the size of the rectangle which we're gonna have to use, okay? Now we're gonna have to come here and then I'm gonna say 308 by 13, uh, 56. Okay, so 13, 56. Now since everything is apparented to this, come here on align and put it like that. So after that, we're gonna increase the size of this. Because now this is literally what's controlling everything in this composition. So when you come back here, you see now it is just positioned in different positions, which we don't want. Start moving them, dragging them and positioning them where they're supposed to be. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a, an effect. So the effect we're going to use for these flags, first of all, I'm gonna, just going to have to go to this one first. And then I'm going to click our shortcut I told you about. And then I'm going to type wave wrap. So wave wrap is what you're gonna use here. We're gonna leave wave type to sign with the height on 10. And we're gonna change the width to 300. For the direction, we're gonna say 550 rather. For the phase, it is gonna be 92192. And then this one is gonna be on high. So now we're gonna copy this and paste it on the second one. So I'm going to drag these two and then bring them here. Switch them off for now, temporarily. I'll switch them back on later, but not now. The next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna come back on my project files and I'm gonna look for an image with people, a bunch of guys, I called it multiple people. So I'm gonna drag it and put it there, okay? So now I'm gonna put a fill effect on it. Yeah, leave it red because it's as default red. And we're going to scale it down a bunch and then put it somewhere here. And also after that, I'm going to get the logo. So this is the first logo. But this logo it has to be white so i'm gonna make it white now i'm going to scale it down as well there should be words down here but then i'm gonna first start with an arrow create a line like this you see the way you're seeing it it is a small line and then i'm gonna create a triangle something like this but now i don't want to use the stroke i want to have the fill on so i'm gonna get rid of the stroke and bring the fill so i'm gonna bring it here and i'm gonna rotate it rotation and I want it to be like 90 degrees cool 
so now i'm gonna drag it and put it at the end of this arrow so i'm gonna name this bar and then i name this arrow head so now i'm going to apply this effect i'm gonna uh, click here and look for trim paths so for trim paths and i think it's gonna start at 1311 so basically this thing starts at that time i'm gonna have this to be my starting point so i'm gonna bring this all the way to zero the final point it is gonna be at time 1712 now my head it starts at zero okay now it starts from this point and then as it is moving it's gonna move along with it okay so now when i move to the uh final part is gonna be here so when we come here the arrow head or even this for that case so we're gonna open opacity by pressing t and then i'm gonna bring everything down to zero so where this starts which is at uh 8 11 that's where everything gets back to 100 okay but i think this thing is too thin i could increase it a bit let's say this is five and increase this uh this one as well a bit to 110 yeah, I guess that makes more sense to me. So afterwards, here down, we're going to be getting our texts. So the first text is 5RM. This is the font I'm going to use, okay? But this has to be in capital letters. Now, this one as well has to be small, but the distance is brazy. So let's just reduce this distance. Let me make it to like zero or even more. Now, let's bring you down here. Let's center this. So now we need to animate it. We're going to start with opacity. This opacity is going to help us to make a typewriter effect. Yeah? We're going to go it to zero. So now when we come here on range, we're going to have the start to be that. And then uh, we're going to make this to 100. Okay, now it's typing up. Inside here, the smoothness, I want it to be on 100%. So when you come here on advanced, you see the smoothness is on 100%. The second part is going to be the position. So when we come back here, we open up our animate and then we're gonna look for a position because it starts from below and then it comes up, okay? So we're gonna put a keyframe there and then a keyframe also at the beginning, at the end rather, the Y axis. We're gonna make it to 300. Yeah, I guess 300 makes sense to me. So we can do it like this, you see? You see, this is how it moves, you see? So we're gonna make this like this, coming up from the bottom to the top. Okay, now let me make this easy ease. Yeah, this makes more sense to me. Now the second part is I'm going to duplicate this exact thing. You see, Ctrl D. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this one a bit below. Okay, it's not going to be exactly where this other guy is, but the word is gonna be weak. Spacing of the text, let me just put it on zero. But this, there is a lot of space. Let's reduce it to something like, uh, I guess, 40 will work. Okay. So now let me reduce the size as well. But I don't want these words to come one by one. I want it to be like a whole word coming together at the same time. So I'm going to use this and then I come on this. And then I'm going to, instead of character, I'm going to say words. Okay. So it just comes as a whole. So something like this. Better. Yeah, that's better so what i'm gonna do i'm going to duplicate these two and then move them up here like that and drag them to this point now i'm going to make this a uh, five to nine nine zero but also i need some space in between you two this is gonna be four years four years and uh, it's gonna be per character not like the previous one where it is the word so it's gonna be per character but they come at the same time, which I don't want. So now what I'm going to do first is just offset them. So when I bring it here, it's 1011. Okay. As Magnet Media is talking and then the words come based on the words he's saying. All right. That's why they're offset in time. We're going to create a rectangle around this word. Okay. All these groups of words. Gonna get rid of the fill and then apply a stroke but the stroke also has to be red okay let's reduce this a bit i want the words to be in the middle this shape doesn't just come like that it animates in i'm gonna come here and just add trim path so let me just cut it by cutting it i just use out and then these box brackets closing towards the right so now i'm going to come here on trim path i'm gonna put a keyframe there and then i just make it zero so this is gets up to 100 okay now 
but now I need to make it easy ease and come to the graph editor and then I don't want it to go almost completely to rest as it's finishing so that's why I'm going to leave some allowance there okay now it is done so that's how it is so I'm gonna get my pen tool and just create a check here wait tick it's green zero zero five ff zero zero so I'm just using that green come here and then I just cut it from there and uh, come in here inside here and just look for trim path my trim path the starting point is gonna be zero uh, this is where the 100 thing gets to okay so now it's the same thing I want it to start very fast and then it ends slowly let's start fast and then we end slowly okay now that this one is done what I'm gonna do next I'm going to come here and come to new and bring a now object you know remember the way I use now object I'm going to use it as a way to help me put everything where I want it to be so that's why I'm using the now object here now yeah, I guess I like to have them up there yeah the now object is gonna help me with that now I can get rid of it or maybe I need it I actually need two now objects so I've duplicated it this is going to be the wiggle we go null and then this is going to be the controller controller okay so that's the controller null now we're gonna make every friggin thing here 3d so there you go so everything is friggin 3d but now the first thing is going the first thing is going to be um i'm going to get all these and then highlight everything like this let me just I hold the first one and then I hold shift and then tap on the last one so when I do that I'm going to parent everything to the now object so this is going to be like the controller it's going to control everything and also the second thing we're gonna use this null object so this now object or the wiggle this wiggle now it is going to also be parented to this controller the reason why I'm doing that is that I want it to be shaky so it's going to be like wiggling this is gonna be 3d but this is not gonna be 3d because i want it to wiggle left right or up you understand i don't want it to be wiggling in the z space and now i'm gonna come here and just press p which is for the position and then i'm gonna hold alt and press on this stopwatch so it is gonna open up uh, this space for for writing the expressions so the expression which i'm gonna add here is gonna be wiggle i'm gonna put these brackets and then i'm gonna put one for frequency and then five to be the amplitude the distance it takes okay okay it's gonna be shaking a bit we're gonna come here on controller our controller and then we are going to just put a keyframe for position okay p and then we're gonna move it slightly backwards and then i'm going to move it up to the point let's say i want it to be moving forward okay I want it to move up okay like it's going to move everything which is selected here it's going to be moved up to reveal something below here okay we haven't yet made the thing below there but we'll do it later so we're going to use this one you understand so the Y like that so as it is moving up you have to make sure that everything just gets like everything gets moved up plus the grid as well because in the second part the grid is not there and you will see the way we get rid of it completely because at the moment it's still there in 17.7 we can come here on the grid and then we just set transparency to be at 100 and then when we go up to the point where where it's 19 we can just set it to zero and now now that the, the grid is no longer there we can cut it off so let's go to the point where it starts moving so now i'm going to look for the members because the members have to be duplicated and then i'm going to duplicate the members and then i'm going to break the contact or the connection so now for this i'm going to move it down here you know what i think it it would make even more sense if i even change the color yeah for me to understand which one it is let me bring it to exactly where the, this keyframe is at but these keyframes i think it is better to just have them like moving fast so like that okay so now we're gonna look for the yellow one we've created i'm going to you know i have this this line already here so what i'm gonna do I'm going to make this thing big you know like I'm gonna drag it here yeah that's better and I'm gonna duplicate it and move it the other side as well okay but the distance from the plus part you see this middle point has to be the same 
want things to be well aligned okay that's better now i'm gonna duplicate the two okay i'm gonna duplicate this one and i'm um, just going to scale it down also yeah let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go if they're too big we can find you can create another object and reduce them but i think this is better so now below here i'm going to add another text let's say it is going to be 300,000 Germanies, Germans, okay, somewhere like that. But now these two, um, let me bring this one and make him stand close to his brothers. I'm going to duplicate, you know, this foyer thing. I'm going to duplicate it. Yes, when I duplicate it like this, I'm going to also drag it down here. And then I'm going to also bring it somewhere like this. I'm going to make everything for the next line yellow. Cool. So when I come back here on the controller and I, oh, wait, 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 this four we've just duplicated, it has to be unlinked. So now when I tap here, everything moves. This is the best point to link these ones because now as this, these guys move down, these ones will go, uh, go lower. You understand? So I'm linking it later now. It was supposed to be linked as well with the other guys, but now the fact that I want them to be below, that's why I'm linking them later. So now I'm going to get that pick whip because now that I've selected everything, that one pick whip will represent the rest of the guys. You get. Okay, now let me come to the controller. Now the controller is what I'm going to use. So now you see, when I move this one down, you see these guys go down. Okay. But now this guy, he needs to be here. But now since he's a 3D object, let me first relieve him of his 3D duties. Now, uh, there is a word which is signed up. Okay, now this is going to be made green as well. So I'm going to use the actual green hex code, the 00FF00. So that's how it is. I'm going to bring you here. So that's where you start. And then it ends at, there you go. So it comes from the bottom and then it animates in. Okay, that's pretty much it for scene two. Okay, we'll add motion blur later. But for now, I think that's all we have for scene two now that we are done with scene two i think we could come back here remember this and we can switch these guys back on so now i'm gonna click on the top layer and then scroll down to the bottom layer which is the flags and then i'm going to pre-compose it and then call it scene two. Oh, i use romans great perfect i'm gonna get the first image in this composition so i'm going to come here on my assets and i'm going to look for the car so i'm going to extend this a bit because i want it to start from this point okay but now i don't need to have these guys on let me just use this and then shy them out so now the beetle first and foremost i'm going to reduce the size of the beetle a bunch so now this beetle guy you know it's not the color which it is supposed to be so first of all i'm going to make it black and white so it's gonna be black and white and then I'm gonna apply a levels adjustment layer levels so for the levels so this is gonna be 61 it's gonna be 170 and then uh, this is gonna be one point uh, 1.39 and now I'm going to remember I am trying to reduce it I want it to be in this corner okay so it being in this corner makes sense to me and then I'm going to apply a drop shadow. Let's say, yeah, that's the drop shadow. It's gonna be below this. And I think it would be better to be like at opacity 80, make the distance 70, 70, and also make the softness, mm, let's say one, three, four. I know you can't see it, but you will see it later because okay, now what we have in the background is a bit, you know, washed out. But now what we could do, I'm going to add a layer, a red layer, actually, let's say a red solid and just say red, the color is going to be red and I'm going to move it down here. I'm going to create a circle and then I'm going to bring my point here and then I'm going to increase it. But then as I'm increasing it, I'm going to hold control and then hold shift 
So when I uh, reach a point like this, I'm going to make it just wide, something like that. I'm releasing, I released shift, okay? So now I'm going to feather by pressing F and then I feather it a bunch, you know? And then I'm gonna reduce the size also, holding shift and control. Now it's just a red thing, like, you know? I want it to create that effect on the background, so I'm gonna change the blend mode to overlay. Uh, you know, you can see it is because you see when we come back, we're gonna go on our background. You see, on our background, we it's too dark. Okay, so now I'm gonna come here on the background. I'm gonna add levels, levels. Okay, add a levels adjustment layer, and then let's increase it slightly a bit. You get now it's slightly increased. Let me first hide this and see. Does it affect the rest of the parts? You know what? I think it's better to just leave it like that. Yeah, I think let's increase it slightly a bit, like the way you're seeing it here. And also, you know what, let me let me increase this guy a bit. Cool. So let's go back to the Volkswagen. Now, um, the next part is putting something here. So I remember what you did in part one. So we're gonna put a shape here. A box like this, but then this box, it didn't have to be having a stroke. It's just going to be a fill. And I want it to be a white fill. Cool. So now I'm gonna use this exact font we used there. So let's say this is zoom. -y. So we're gonna give it some space. And then we're gonna make it red. Okay, let's put this anchor point in the center. Okay. You know what? Let me let me also move it slightly up. I'm gonna go back to the project and then come here and go to the precomps. You remember what we did with this savings booklet? I'm gonna copy this thing and then I'm gonna create another Vox word animation. Yeah, I guess. But I want it to be 1920 by 1080. 80, 30 seconds, great. So I'm gonna paste it here. So for this one, I'm going to let it start from the beginning. So now we're gonna say, ever got there are Volkswagen. So now I'm gonna highlight this. After highlighting that, I'm gonna come here on the fill and I'm gonna change the color. So now I'm gonna get this. So I'm gonna come back here in my video and then I'm gonna look for this word animation and bring it somewhere down here. Okay. So now I could just place it here. So you you have you have to be controlled by this. Nice. Okay, now all these, they have to be 3D objects. Okay, let's switch toggle switches. And then you get all the 3D things. And then I'm going to open up the second view to be seeing them. Okay, this is like the top. All right, now the car, the car for it is going to be at the front, for front. So I'm going to pull the car towards the front. But now I don't want it to be so big. Let's reduce it the size. And I'm going to extend it to somehow up there yeah so i think that's better and also i need to extend it inwards so i'm going to get this you know the nine shape and then i'm going to move it also forward uh, it's going to be bigger it's going to be at the going to be for front okay that's better that's beta and then the word can be behind the reason why i'm doing this is like i want it to be on different planes so that if we apply our animation you'll see all the entire animation you'll see them showing that they're not the same plane okay but then the perfectionist in me feels like I need to put a drop shadow or I need to come up with a way to show that this thing drops a shadow out down there so I'm gonna do this I know it's not in the original video but then I'm just gonna do it nonetheless okay so I'm gonna duplicate this guy you see and then after that i'm gonna flip it vertically and then i'm going to drag it until you see these parts align okay like the wheels yeah let's come here close you know what let's get rid of these two views you know since it's the reflection i'm going to apply an effect you know like when i come here i'm going to delete most of the effects because i don't think i need most of them i don't think i even need any of them yeah Let's do that and then I'm gonna do fill. So when I apply fill, 
you see fill it's red but i want it black because it's a shadow so now that's done after that you know what let me solo solo these two you know solo by pressing this tick i'm gonna highlight everything and then i press this small dot now they're soloed now i'm going to bring to do this to bring the transparency back and then what i'm gonna do i'm going to come here and i'm gonna add gaussian blur so gaussian blur is gonna be like giving me that blurriness okay the shadow has to be blurry it can't be sharp okay something like that and then the last thing it is going to be so we're gonna click on it and then we're gonna create a mask so when you create a mask like this now we can use feather to feather it a bunch so now when we come like this move this one down you'll see that it's now creating a good shadow okay so now when we bring the rest of the guys i know you won't see this i'm a perfectionist and i feel like i would sleep well at night when i have it there so better but now since these are the same i'm going to parent them together okay but now that we have done most of the things i think it's now better to pull everything to where it's supposed to be okay so you what you have to be here and you 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 have to be here yeah cutting you okay this thing animates actually it starts like it zooms out okay so when it is zooming out should we use a camera instead i do feel like it's better to just use a null object fine this is a 3d object but then i do prefer to use a null object to animate them okay so now i'm gonna open up a new null object and i'm gonna bring it into my composition and then i'm gonna cut it from where i want it to start animating and then just put air put something here like position keyframe but now i'm gonna make it 3d and um you know everything which is parented to the other i'm going to leave it i'm going to parent things which are par uh, which are moving the other all right that makes more sense i think and then none of the words it's going to also come here voice animation yeah i guess you also need to move it uh, this is where the animation is going to stop okay so i'm going to put it exactly here because i want it to look like this when it reaches this point so oh maybe i could reduce it a bit and then come here move it so close to the camera here i think it would be better to just have these things easy easing something like that yeah let's say okay from assistant and then i'm just gonna say no i don't want it to completely go to rest i want it to gradually reduce but then i want it to start a bit faster somewhere like that so i want it to start a bit faster as it is moving backwards okay it's not traveling a bigger distance or the distance is not that long but i think it's better like that this is like the animator let me call this the animator let's go to the account or assets and then we're gonna look for the coin so i'm gonna bring the coin and put it here but now i think the animator is gonna control all the animation so i think it's better to have it uh, below it and now let me just make you like this uh, the coin should have like tint Okay, oh, black and white but i think let's use tint let's use tint and uh, camera lens blur and then afterwards we will make this zero yeah we're not going to animate it yet okay the scale of the coin should be like 45 yeah i guess i like it like that so i'm going to duplicate this coin but then the way i'm duplicating it, i'm gonna hold ctrl shift d so that it cuts it and then it creates it on the next line okay so but well, i'm gonna move these ones below okay so this is like a full coin and now this is gonna be like the coins which are gonna be breaking okay so now i'm going to say this one comes from this like this i'm using a pen tool to make this crack okay and then i'm going to finish up the entire boundary like that so it is gonna cut it but now because we need two parts i'm gonna duplicate this and then i'll invert or i'll either say subtract or invert so this is the time where they they start so i'm gonna go and press p but remember these are 3d objects so basically i'm gonna have to highlight these and make them into 3d objects but yes i know the problem is they are now in front of the car but now i'm going to first solo this yeah behind the car so now i'm going to press these ones which are below and then press p to reveal the positions 
and then I'm going to create keyframes for where they are at, at that very moment. So this one is going to move. You know what? I think that's so far. I think 50 will do for me. And this one, it is going to be plus 50. So now I'm going to highlight these guys, <clears throat> make them easy ease. I'm going to go into the graph editor and then say, let me highlight both of them. But this one can start very fast because it's like breaking up. Yeah, that's better. But now I want to mimic something like a shock wave, something like shocking, you understand? So what I'm going to do first, like I want it to, to be like there was some bit of wiggle, you know, as it was breaking something happened so now what i'm going to do first i'm going to come here and just um now object we're going to trim it it's going to start from this point and then end on this point i'm going to just move this one slightly above and then i'm going to create another null object okay so this null object is going to be like the entire null object which is, which is going to control all the coins you know these coins Okay, it's one coin, but then I've broken it down because it is animated and it can only be possible if we are having them in two, in different points, different parts rather. So now I'm going to get this and I'm going to parent all these coins. Let me also make this one 3D and then I'm parent these ones to it. Okay, so this is going to be like the coin control. I'm going to still parent this coin control to this null object. This null object is going to be named Wiggle. And I'm going to add an effect called slider control. So this is going to make it shake at a certain point. Okay. So now I'm going to come down here. The reason why I'm leaving it 2D is because I want only animate two axes, the X and the Y axis. That's all I want to animate. Okay. So now I'm going to come here in uh, transformation and then look for position. I alt click on the position and then we go into brackets. I'm going to pip whip to this one. Okay. And then I'm going to comma. I'm going to say five so amplitude is going to stay the same and um frequency is going to change all right so now i'm going to close this now the rest the, the only thing that i'm going to animate is going to be this one not anything below here so by the time it breaks it is going to be five i want it to be five when it breaks okay so now before it breaks though it's going to be zero okay and now i'm going to bring it forward and also do the same thing and it's going to go to zero okay so it's just going to shake for a while. So now that's uh, that's it for the coin. So we're going to look for the animator for the coin controller. Coin controller is here. We are going to put a keyframe for rotation. So we're going to say rotation. It is going to be at zero. Let's see, this is going to be like 30. So now, but as it goes, it's going to be zero. I think this is the exact point where it breaks. Okay, so it's not in the original design but sometimes I, I like to do things the way I feel like they look better and that's why I decided to do that okay but now uh, based on this I'm going to make these easy ease or you can just press F9 you're gonna come here and do something like that and leave the other side like the way it is okay I don't want it to be like that I would however make it minus okay so like that but the way it comes in i don't like the way it comes in it is not going to start when it's completely on okay so i'm going to try to also animate the opacity so it starts uh let's say transform tra transparency which is deep so i'm going to start when it is zero and as it is rotating it keeps on coming in okay let's say when we come here we'll just say blur radius is going to be on 20 20 and then as it goes up to the end it gets to zero okay so it just shows like maybe is it like it, it is getting into focus or something like that and then this one happens so but these two i don't think these two need the blah yeah i don't think they do need it because it's already applied on the first one yeah so if we come here on the controller and call it like let's say 70 70 is the sweet spot Okay, now let's bring back the rest. So, position and forward we go. So, what I'm gonna say, I'm just, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to get a, an adjustment layer and then I'm gonna put it below here. It's actually going to be starting from this point and like that. And then I'm going to add 
something like let's say this is gonna be a camera lens blur so it's going to blur everything which is below okay the way to do it i'm going to bring it at the start and then i just put the blurriness to zero okay and as it is moving towards the this side or as the coin is coming into focus the car is going out of focus the car and everything in the background they're going out of focus and also i think it would make more sense if i am to add um tint okay so this tint effect is going to help me let me also make this is this one black so you're going to understand how this goes so i'm going to start at the start tint i want this to be at zero okay so because as it is going in the background it i want it to be like getting like you know somehow darker okay that's too dark let's just use 40 30 yeah 30 great you get so now it is like that so i'm gonna call this one pre-composition rather i'm gonna call this uh rack focus so it rack focuses like when this is getting into focus the other one is getting out of focus you wait i didn't animate the blurriness damn sorry this is going to start when it's 20. and as it approaches the end it will be zero okay so you understand like now it is in focus and now this one is going in focus and this one is going out of focus so cool that's it for the second part so now let's uh, do what we've been doing for the rest of the work so pre-compose and i'm gonna call this scene theory so it's done as well so to get started let's first open up this the third part because as we left off on third part we saw that we had fixed a few things now that it is going to be doing this okay the first thing uh, i'm going to add some of the overlays or the effects which are needed in this scene the first one anything which is moving in the background is going to be important so i'm going to get the shockwave i'm going to drag it and drop it below so maybe i could add this thing called polar coordinate okay and then i can increase it a bunch and then move it like this downwards though i want it to be upside down okay so let's first scale it down a bit so rotate it 90 degrees or 180 when it flipped upside down cool i think i like this okay now that's the first thing but now i um, since this is in the background it's better to just put it here so if we move it to this side you will see okay that's pretty much it so let's make this even longer okay nice 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 you know what i think maybe we could just leave it like this and then i could cut this from there and then extend this you know i'm holding out and then i'm moving it so it's like extending the time so now we're gonna change the blend mode to so when you make it screen you'll be able to see the background behind it yeah i think i like this but this space i don't like the space below perhaps i could duplicate this and move it slightly lower like this okay so that you don't have that space below i'm going to reduce the opacity to 70 and also this one to uh, like 70 as well so when we come here in the background now i could increase now i'm going to reduce this even more to like 40. the same applies to this too 40. i'm trying to bring in the background a bit okay cool but then i want this to be below i want it to be on top yeah somehow like that now <clears throat> in the same thing or in the same composition we're going to look for particles we have particles here so for the particles i'm going to look for some crazy uh, particles which are moving let's look for those those particles okay i think these are i've seen yeah these are better 
Oh, these are so crazy. Yeah, I think these would do. So now, I'm gonna get them particles. Now, I'm going to just use these brackets like that. Okay. You see that? That's how we roll, bro. That's how we roll. I think I'm gonna get these and bring them down here. It actually makes more sense when they're here. You see that? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. But now the problem is uh, these ones, they're not, you know, like, uh, I need to get rid of the background, okay? So I'm just gonna turn all of them to normal. And then I'm going to bring back this, but now you can see nothing, okay? So now I'm gonna use this. It is, um, it's alpha. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, okay, let me just remove this. I'm going to get these two, copy, and I'm gonna paste it on this one too, and paste it on this one too. So you see, it's all particles which are going through, but then we've cut off the black parts, okay? So now when you come back here in our main composition, you will see everything is there, but then, you know, it has no background. Let's try to play around with levels and see. I would prefer to have levels on top though. Okay, and this one applies to this guy. Yeah, that's fair enough. I like that. So you see, now that's how it is. Get that. You know what, I feel like I could add this uh, texture as well. This texture here. And then increase it a bit. Screen. Yeah, I could use screen, but then I have to also add levels on it to reduce. And now on this next one, we do have an overlay on top of it. Okay, so this overlay is going to be like, let me even just go back in my project files. Uh, it's not here, but then let me get it. So on scene 2. We're gonna add this on the extreme top. So I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen. You see that? Let me just cut it from here. I'll extend it like later. So not holding out. Now I've hold. Now I've held the out key, and then I'm gonna expand it. Yeah, that's that's better. But then I'm going to reduce the opacity to like 60%. I really do like that. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back. It's applied already. And maybe the one thing which is left, there is a transition here and a transition here. So now, in order to add a transition here, um, remember when I told you that you had to download this animation composer? Yeah, this is, uh, you're going to see it, it's a transition you're going to add here. So now, let me come at the point where we break it. Okay, so this is where it breaks. Now we're going to go here and go in pre-comp, start our pre-comps and look for this. So now it's done. Does that now make sense? Cool. And also, there's another transition. Okay, and that transition is like, I have an asset here in my assets folder, and uh, it is a uh, film damaged. So I'm going to go through it to look for a particular point. I feel like this is better from this point to this point. This has to be on top. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the blend mode here to screen. Okay. You see, it's like. Okay, that's it. But now, um, the overlays and, um, the first overlay which I'm going to use is um, I have this woven texture. I'm going to put it here below, resize it a bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply a levels adjustment layer here. And then levels, I'm going to say uh, black. Input black is going to be 170. Maybe just let me just increase it by just one or six. Because I'm trying to crush, you know, like most of the uh, the black parts. And this, I'm gonna make it 0.83. 
Now I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So here you will see that, you know, you can see most of the things. Let's use the opacity to 30. So there is some bit of texture and yeah. Also another thing, we're going to add another overlay. So for this I'm going to scale it to comp. Oh, I think also this would make more sense if it's scaled to comp. Let me first hide this and see how it looks. Okay, so this one too, I'm going to tag it into multiply as well. So now some parts are hidden. I think I'm going to expand it slightly a bit. Okay, somewhere like that. Cool. Now again, I'm going to come here and add an adjustment layer below the same transitions and I'm going to call this Vignetti. Vignetti. Yeah, I'm going to leave it as default, like the way it is, like that. Mm, yeah, I guess you learned something. If you like this video, comment below or like, subscribe and maybe do anything that people do. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the course. The course is coming. So, bye-bye.